Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just 5 minutes a day. In today's video, we cover glide distance in the Diamond DA40. You're out in the practice area performing clearing turns and the engine suddenly sputters. Oil pressure's in the red and shortly after you find yourself with a dead engine that won't restart. You're at 5,000 feet AGL and the nearest airport runway is 7 miles away. Can we make it there or should we start looking for the least bumpy field down below? We'll answer that question today. Before we begin, confidence is key in any emergency situation. You want to be confident that both you and your aircraft will perform in a predictable manner. With that being said, it's very important that we go out and practice engine out procedures in a variety of density altitudes and wind velocities, making note of our aircraft's actual glide ratio in these situations. We will refer to our aircraft's POH to get an idea of what kind of glide distances we can expect in flight. Open to the table of contents and locate the emergency procedures section. Turn to the Emergency Procedures section table of contents and look for the gliding data chart. These glide ratios reflect a flaps-up glide at a glide speed dependent upon the weight of the aircraft. I like to explain this parallel increase in both glide speed and weight simply by thinking that any increase in weight will have to be matched by an increase in speed to generate enough lift to keep the aircraft gliding along. Beyond that, glide ratio in the Diamond DA40 will be determined by whether or not the prop is windmilling. I won't pay much attention to these figures 8.8 .8 and 10.3 here. These simply tell you how many feet you can expect to travel forward per one foot of altitude lost. Rather than set my glide ratio up foot for foot, I prefer to find how many nautical miles I will travel per thousand feet of altitude above obstacles, as I have never measured my distance to an airport in feet. Fortunately, Diamond has listed these ratios on this page as well. With the prop windmilling, the maximum glide ratio is 1.45 nautical miles for every 1,000 foot of altitude loss. With the prop stationary, the maximum glide ratio is a bit higher at 1.7 nautical miles for every 1,000 feet. Going back to our engine failure scenario from earlier, with the prop windmilling and 5,000 feet altitude, we can expect a glide distance of roughly 7.2 nautical miles. With the airport exactly 7 nautical miles away, that 0.2 nautical mile buffer doesn't leave us much room for error. Remember, this 7.2 nautical miles is best case scenario. With all that being said, it may be a good idea not to pass up a suitable landing spot directly down below if one is available. If the prop were totally stopped up, giving us a 1.7 glide ratio, that 5,000 foot altitude over terrain would leave us with an 8.5 nautical mile glide distance. This leaves us with a nice big buffer in case we fudge anything up while landing at our airport only 7 nautical miles away. In this case, we can turn directly towards the airport, squawk 7700, and call ahead to alert anyone in the airspace of our intentions to land with no power. To recap how to find glide distance in the DA-40, simply determine the necessary speed based on weight, take your altitude divided by 1000, and multiply by our glide ratio in order to find your expected glide distance. In this case, the glide ratios to be expected are 1.45 if the prop is still spinning and 1.7 if it's not. Remember, these values are only expected values. It is always a good idea to get out there and make note of the glide ratios to be expected in actual flight. Having that number memorized may help out one day in an emergency. This concludes today's video covering engine out glide distance for the Diamond DA-40. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.